I suppose just start by how much you're looking forward to maybe getting a bit of a send off that you missed when you left, which feels like a while ago now, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a million years ago now. And to be fair, it's the first time I've been back, and it's great to be back at Lennox Town and see some some of the faces that I've I've missed over the years. But no, it's it's also fantastic as well because I didn't get a proper chance to say goodbye to the fans and uh, during obviously the Covid season and there was nobody in the stadiums then me leaving and going up to Aberdeen so I've never had that opportunity to thank them for the 14 years that I was at the club and especially for the special memories that they gave me as well. Did that kind of um, a rankle with you when you left? It's obviously no one's fault, it was just the way it was but just the fact that you didn't, of all the service you've given, you didn't just get that, that moment at, at Celtic Park, at a full Celtic Park to get the the send-off that other players have obviously had over the years? It was more just for me to say bye to them because they've been brilliant with me over the years and this event coming up and it couldn't work with a better person uh, with Lusto as well and for myself to leave at the time, it was was the right time for myself to leave. I knew I wasn't getting any younger. I wanted to go and explore a different avenue and that I went and done. I learned as much as I possibly could in that short period of time up in Aberdeen. Uh, be- about becoming a coach, but for me, uh, it was always it was always going to be a hard decision to to make to leave this club that's been fantastic for myself and family over the last fourteen years and some of the highs and lows we've had together. But we've we've got through that together as as players and supporters as well. Uh, you obviously went straight from playing into into management. Um, do you look back on that as a as a brave decision, given you maybe not had a huge amount of coaching experience before that? Uh, it could have went one way or the other, couldn't have. Uh, but I'm I'm still in a job there now. I'm nine months down the line, and I'm I'm enjoying it. I've got a smile on my face. I've not got too many grey hairs so far, and it's a it's a great place for me to go and learn and to understand what it is like to to manage 23, 24 players, but also the expectation of winning games and to try and stay in a league and push push yourself up in those league positions as well because the Fleetwood last season survived on the last day of the season yeah, on goal difference. So for us, we wanted to be in a better situation in, than, than what we were last season, which we are so far. So we're three points better off than now as it stands, but there's still a long way to go for our season so far. And just finally for me, what have you found the most difficult thing about being a manager so far? It's letting the lads down that's not going to be playing on the Saturday. And the ones that have been working hard all week and not getting in the squad. and You feel for them because it's, it wasn't that long ago I was in that position that uh, you're trying to talk to the lads that maybe didn't get in the squad and try and cheer them up to keep them on side as well. But I think that's the hardest thing. And the, as soon as Friday goes, it's, it's all about the lads, my team talk and then it's about how they're going to express herself on the, on the field. So the, the, the Saturday is usually the easiest bit for my job, but it's the coaching during the week that we need to make sure that, that we get sorted as quick as we possibly can. And the last six, seven weeks there, the lads have been exceptional, but it's been hard on their body. It's been Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, and some of them aren't used to that much uh, game time. And for us not having the biggest squad in the world, you, you've got to rely on the same ones to keep going week in, week out. Hi Scott, how you doing? <clears throat> Hello Ramon, long time no see. Yeah, lucky you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Scott, um, just before you before you went into management, did you always think that, okay, when I go there, I'm going to be my own man, but having now started on this role in nine months, have you sought and spoke to other people while you've been in the role? Yeah, I've spoke to previous managers uh, quite a lot, to be perfectly honest, about how to go about becoming a manager because... For me, being a big personality in a changing room, I like to laugh and a joke, but as soon as it went across the, the white line, I got very serious and I, I loved my job and I always played to win. But it, it's different because now I can't go across that white line, I can't go and try and influence the game. So it's about what we do week in, week out in training, the standards that we set as, as staff, how we prepare as well, make sure that we're focused, ready, we give them the best opportunity of understanding how the te- that we are going to play against play and how we can obviously expose them as well. How cool on is it, Scott? Yeah, you, you appreciate being a player when it's uh, you're coming in at half past nine you can leave at half past one. Uh, it's it's hard work watching games continuously and 
just seeing the same themes and thinking you're going to see something different. But for, for us, it's, it's enjoyable as well because it's what we wanted to do. We wanted to, as soon as you finish playing, you, you want to stay in the, in the sport as long as you possibly can. And for me, it's the next best thing to become a manager, to have not maybe a dressing room there, but also having those coaches that are around you, knowing that they've got your back and the staff as well, that everyone works so hard and, we are a small club, but we all come together and we work really well together, and I, th I think that's a bonus about the club. How much are you able to keep a promise with Celtic are doing? What was that, sorry? How much are you still able to keep a promise with the former club Celtic are doing? Yeah, it's to, to be fair, in, the, in our coaches' room, it's, there's a slight divide. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's, a, there's a few, there's me and the goalie coach, both Celtic, and there's Baz Nick and the Stephen Whitaker Rangers, so... Believe me, we, we seem to be watching a lot of uh, Scottish football as well. And I always watch Celtic, I always watch for the scores as well. And if the game's on telly, I try and watch it as much as I possibly can. Another success for Celtic uh, in the League Cup final triumph over um, Rangers. Uh, that's another trophy lift for, for Callum McGregor. Um, what do you make of the job he's done since you kind of left your role there, Scott? Yeah, I always knew Cal was the, the right one for the job. He, he loves the club, he wants to be here. He's came all the way through the youth and he knows what the fans want and expect as well. And that, that, that's a huge thing for a captain of a football club. And probably when I got thrown into the role when I was uh, a lot younger, I was a little bit naive at the time. But Cal understands because he's he's went through those stages. He's went and earned his badges going out on loan, then came back in and, and fought for his place. And quite rightly so, he should be captain of this club because the way he conducts himself, his energy about the building, his personality, and he's, he's a born winner as well. Lastly for me, Scott, that's 17 major honours for him. Closing in on your 22, if he stays clear of injury, do you think he can surpass your, your milestone? I would love him to, yeah, but I think uh, the good old cliche, one at a time, just concentrate on the concentrate on the league and concentrate on the cup coming up and it's not about looking too far into the future, it's about him maintaining his form, which he's, he's doing very well so far. Thanks, Scott. How are you getting on? Hello, pal. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um... Talking about Cal McGregor there, just wondering if you've had the chance today to to meet the new manager, Ange Postacoglu. You caught up with him? I've literally just got in the building five minutes ago. Some of us have, some of us were had the privilege to do the school run for for once. So uh, no, uh, not at this moment in time. I got a picture and then came and spoke to you, you lovely people. Oh, fantastic! Well, what have you made of the job that he's done here? Because when he came in. You know, uh, just just after you left the club, not too many people in Scottish football knew who he was. Four trophies already, uh, three trophies already. So it looks like this season that there, there could be another treble on the cards. What have you made of of the job that he's done, and the football that he's implemented at the club? Yeah, I thought his recruitment's been exceptional as well, and the players he's brought in, the way he wants to play, the way he conducts himself as well, is exceptional. And I, I think that the fans have bought into the to the way he wants to play now, and. Yeah, it was hard at the start, but uh, there's always going to be <laughs> small changes that will take time, and he's implemented them really well. And f for me, I'm just delighted that he's thriving as well, and the fans are backing him as well. And the lads seem to be enjoying playing because when I watch it, I enjoy watching that as well. And yeah, I take a, I take a lot of from the way they play as well because I love energy in the team, and they seem to have a lot of that as well. But it's that composure on the ball and that willingness to help your teammate out as well. If you were to look at this team and compare it to some of the great teams you played in, several great Celtic teams, how, how would you you think that some of the teams you played in would fare against this side? Would you like to come up against this side? How do you think you get on? I think we're a wee bit too old to come and play against these now. So I think there's a <laughs> there'll be a huge gap now. But no, for me, it's not about comparing. It's about hoping they continue doing what they do and. They've got a huge game on Saturday, preparations will be underway and I'm not really here just to mess that that up for them, so I'm staying low-key. Just got to ask you one more, going back to your, your management side of things. Obviously, you did go up to, to Aberdeen. How do you look back at your time there and do you think that that did prepare you better for management and coaching? Yeah, definitely. And I went up to learn to understand what it's like to be in a coach's room and... Yeah, I could have probably sat in a little bit more meetings when I was in at Celtic, but you know you're the captain, you don't want to overstep your position. And for me, it was more about going up to Aberdeen, 
understanding how it worked day to day, training sessions, sizes of pitches, sizes depending if it's 5v5, 4v4s and it's small things that you probably take taken for granted when you, you walk out to a pitch and you see the pitches all set up that the coaches have went out for and it slowly moves from one area to another and it's that fluency that you, you want to have, the understanding as well but also you, you need to go and learn somewhere and you if I stayed at Celtic, I'd have probably never left it at the same time because I enjoyed it so much here. But uh, I made that decision that I wanted to go and explore a, another option. And did I expect to play as many games at Aberdeen? I probably didn't, to be perfectly honest. But uh, I enjoyed my time there, and I, I say it was it was a great learning curve for myself. And it, it was the right time for me to leave Celtic because I made that decision before the end of the season, and I kept that uh, hush that I was going to leave one way or the other, but I didn't know I'd be going to Aberdeen until uh, late on in the time. Hi, Scott. Obviously, you spent the entire uh, playing career in Scotland. How have you found going down to England and adapting to a new league and getting used to the environment down there? Yeah, I'm getting used to the travelling, that's for sure. Uh, we went to Exeter and that was nine hours on the bus, so that, that was lovely. Um, <clears throat> no, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed going to different stadiums, coming up against different teams as well. and uh, I also enjoy being underdogs. Uh, for myself to go to Fleetwood and we, we knew it was always going to be a big challenge and we always want to push the club forward but I, I've enjoyed coming away a little bit from the limelight up in Scotland to hopefully let it focus a little bit more on the lads and not always talk about my, myself being ex-Celtic uh, captain so now the lads have done really well for us and it's all about them now it's, it's not about me I've had my time that's that's went in the history and it's about focusing on my managing and career and what was best for me at this opportunity. Was that a conscious decision then to get out of Scotland at that point to start your managerial career? Uh, it wouldn't have been if I didn't have an offer. So uh, no, I was I was a, I was delighted to have that offer. I got an offer in Scotland to stay in Scotland as well. But the training facilities and what the club was offering at the time. Uh, was exceptional and for, for us you, you want a good training academy you want the young ones coming through and you also want good training facilities as well and the, the chairman's built a fantastic complex there he's always trying to improve it as well so f for myself as the first club it was a great opportunity for me to go there How do you see your I know it's hard for any manager to have a pathway or whatever but do you have a rough idea how you envisage things panning out in the coming years or yeah, hopefully I win next week. And then the week after that, it would be nice to get another one as well. Uh, no, it's just week to week. Uh, you never know what can happen in football. You, your luck can turn. It could be it could go for you. And we've had a fantastic seven weeks just there. So we need to make sure that we keep pushing, we keep driving the standards as well, and the lads keep driving as well. So it's just about now. Uh, we go Saturday to Saturday quite a lot uh, to the end of the season, so the, the lads will be a lot bit more refreshed and they'll be ready to go as, as soon as Saturday comes as well. So for us, it's just about understanding what they need and when they need the training, the days off, and also when they need pushed as well. Hi, Scott. Um, there's been a oh, yeah. huge turnover in players since your time at Celtic. When you look at the team and the players in there, is there any one in particular or, or a few players that you think you would love to have played alongside? Uh, definitely Rio in the middle of the park. Uh, he's got great energy and especially the, the older I got it would have been lovely to play alongside him so he could do some more of my running. Uh, Wee Kyogo always plays with a smile on his face. Um, I, f I just enjoy watching the, their energy and for me Jota seems to be enjoying football as well in here so no, it's good that they've got that turnaround that the the board have backed the manager as well, which is fantastic. So going that way, you, you obviously you back the manager and he's, he's got the quality to come in as well and his recruitment's been exceptional. So going forward, I'm sure they'll have a lot of trust and faith in him as well. Going back to Aberdeen, how do you how do you see their season going from now until the end? And on Barry Robson, do you think it's, it will be hard for the board to look past him as manager given how he's done in the interim? Robbo's done a fantastic job and it was always going to be hard for Robbo because he, he went in just before, uh, just after Glassy left as well and it was hard for him and then he's went in just after Jim's left so uh, it's maybe his opportunity this time, he's, he is a young manager, he's keen, he's definitely earned his badge, he's been at Aberdeen for that long, under, learning under Derek McInnes and all the way through there so for me there's, there's probably no better man at this opportunity, he, he loves the club, he understands the club and he wants the club to get better and he's got that drive to do that as well. 
and they say, you know, being in Glasgow, the, the goldfish bowl and all that. Um, what do you miss about that, if anything? <laughs> For me, I miss playing in front of 60,000 fans. I, I, I loved playing here. I enjoyed every single moment of it. Fantastic pitch, great stadium, great training facilities as well. So you, you always miss that. And I, I go down the road and I, I get peace and quiet. So sometimes it's actually, you, you've got to take some sort of goodness away from that as well. But no, I always will enjoy coming back up and coming back into Edinburgh and Glasgow. And I'm really looking forward to the event as well, just to see the Celtic fans, because it's been a long time since I've actually seen them. And I know I came back against Aberdeen, but it was never going to be the same. And I would never say bye to them when I was at another club, because it would disrespect the other club. But for myself, it would be, it's a great opportunity for me to come to say goodbye to them and hopefully uh, see Lusto as well and give you a couple of good stories and a little bit of crack as well.